<laughs> what is up, YouTube land? It's time. Look at that start screen. You know what this is. We know what this is. Let's go. This is a game that I've wanted to do for a very long time. This is a very, uh, uh, dear game to me. Very nostalgic. It's very interesting. It's definitely not my favorite RPG, but it is probably the most interesting one to me. You know what's funny? And it probably makes a lot of sense. Um, I started, I picked up Saga Frontier again, and I'm going through one of the quests. <laughs> FF8 is pretty analogous in many ways to um, Saga Frontier. Uh, simply because it's like, Hey, it has a lot of amazing ideas where the execution sometimes isn't perfect, but you can, like, look past and be like, oh my god, what a what an experience. Yeah, this game is so interesting to me. Um, it is a game that I think has a lot of really high highs, but very low lows. Um, especially as a follow-up to FF7, which was, like, one of the biggest gaming events of all time. Not even just for RPGs, just for all games. To deviate from the formula this much with FF8 is just like, it's so bold, and I think overall it didn't pan out for them, but this game is just so interesting. I would go as far to say that a lot of, I mean, FF7 was my first FF game, but that was also because I was only 9 when it came out. But for a lot of people, I still think FF7 was their first, just because if you look at the sales numbers comparing FF7 to FF3 on the Super Nintendo, I mean... Right, ridiculously higher than FF3. Yeah, FF7 also had a very specific deal where Sony really wanted to bring a Square uh, Soft at the time into their like family. So not only did they publish FF7, but they also funded some of the advertising. And FF7 ended up having like a hundred million dollar like marketing budget, which is just insane for like the mid '90s. Right, and then for people to know, if if you were a fan from day one and you played FF1, 2, and 3, uh, which were all very different games, you'd be like, oh, FF8's going to be way different. But just thinking back then, especially when the internet wasn't as big or whatever, going from 7 to 8, you're like, okay, I know it's going to be different characters, but it's going to be like a very similar game, right? And in the grand scheme of the world, it's a similar game in that they're both turn-based RPGs. Yeah, on a very, very surface level there. But, in in anything else besides a surface level, they are very different. Uh, even the, I mean, the graphics are obviously much better, but obviously they went for a much more realistic look. Um, pretty amazing that FF7, I think, came out in early 97, and FF8 came out in 99. Yeah. I mean... Yes, game development w took less long than it does nowadays, but that's still pretty insane to me. And even crazier, FF9 came out in 2000, uh, although they obviously had a different team working on that. No! Oh, but he's going to get his return. Hard to tell, but he did uh, slice uh, Cypher's uh, face. Da -da -da -da. Also, the soundtrack, <laughs> by the way. Uh, so for anyone that's like, I wouldn't say worried, but just like wondering what I'm doing for this uh, playthrough, it's gonna be I'm gonna be showing off how to do an initial level run. For the most part, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with it the entire time, but you can do initial level. I'll go over in the more in depth stuff with this, and also a lot of things are gonna be a bridge. I'm gonna be skipping the, um, like grinding and uh, especially initial level. There's very annoying ways to grind. Like it's your only option. Same. Leon. I was thinking of doing like a meme name, but uh, I have all my save files with Squall, so whatever. Tell that to Cypher. That's how he sounds. Just kidding, he doesn't. Tell that to Cypher! I'm playing the remastered version. The remastered's weird. Uh, they like update the models a little bit, but it seems like it's using like basically the same game. Uh, but there's some modernizations, which is nice, especially, uh, speed up. Uh, at any time I can click L3 and, uh, you can see that times three thing, just to speed things oh, up. Oh, man! So, uh... Why is she even there? What?! <laughs> I, I mean, if, if you go through this game blind, we're not gonna give anything away, or we'll, we'll try our best not to give anything crazy away. But if you've played this game before and you're watching this, you're like, 
Oh my god, within 30 seconds, you see that person. Yeah, uh, another thing about this game, even not even just talking about gameplay, which is very contentious, uh, the plot and the characters of this game are very... Uh, <laughs> I, I think people still don't know what to make of it <laughs> to this day. Yeah, I mean... Squall's an okay character. Not as good as Cloud. Uh, they they kind of take the, the... When Cloud was a butthole, and then just made it, like, moody butthole the whole yeah, time. Yeah, made it more angsty. Uh, Squall definitely has character development. He's not as obnoxious. But yeah, I definitely like Cloud better than Squirrel. Oh, they're finishing their sandwiches. Ha -ha. Yes. Yes! Yes! Yeah, this game is... I don't have a lot of nostalgia in my life. I'm just not that type of person. But there's a couple games that bring back memories to me. Specifically, this game, Sonic Frontier, Clock Tower 1, like Crash Bandicoot 2. I don't know why it's all PS1 games, but it, it literally is. And it's only, like, those handful of games for me. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 2. And Crash 3. Uh, one of my very vivid memories, for some reason, is watching you play Crash 3 while I listened to Pinkerton, the album. Let's go. On my knockoff Walkman. <clears throat> or to remain here and study. Uh, I'm curious to see... <laughs> I, I always knew that a low-level run, or initial level, whatever run is, is possible. Um, that's me. But uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see how, how it goes. Yeah, a low-level run is pretty easy to do, and in, in fact it's like kind of preferred. Um, but initial level is pretty specific, and you have to do a lot of weird things. No, get your GFs! <laughs> I will. I have to talk to Quistus first. Ah. gonna go this morning. Also, Squall canonically is like, I don't know, 17. So essentially he, uh, in JRPG standings, he's like middle-aged. Uh, Quistus is her teacher, but uh, she's like 24, I think? I think she's less than that, let me check. I think she might be like 21. It's definitely early 20s to mid-20s. Yeah. Alright, so we're getting our GFs. You get the first two for basically free. Quistus is 18. Oh, wow. <laughs> I honestly thought she was like 21. <laughs> hey, yeah. Stealthy. Quistus is only 18 years old, then why is she a teacher at an academy on Game Facts from a couple years ago? Because <laughs> Japan. Because Japan. Quist or I'm sorry, Selfie, whom you are talking to now, that is not a big secret, uh, is uh, like 16, I guess? Yeah, I guess they're all like a little bit older than But that, 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 that age gap from 16 to 18 is like 10 years in JRPGs. So this guy's giving us our starter uh, Triple Triad deck, which uh, I am going to go for all uh, Triple Triad cards, which uh, for anyone familiar with this game is very hard, but you get rewarded a lot for it. Um, I'll be going more into it, but card refining and item refining is absolutely busted in this game. Yeah, I, I know that any sort of... Um any sort of run, uh, speed run or whatever, it's like, get this card, uh, go and, uh, go and refine it for, like, a hundred of whatevers, and it's like, okay, you're set for the whole game now. Dude, you can times three past the, uh, when she talks over and over again about junctioning. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I can't. Uh, no! so specific points, uh, times three doesn't work, and specifically junctioning doesn't work. Or, uh, the, the tutorials. GF gives us strength. Yeah, see, it's like, you can see it's crossed out. Wait, did you, did you get your GFs? Yes. Oh. You were looking up, uh, Quistus's Oh, that's right, that's right. Look at Quistus's HP. 
Oh ho ho, attack at him. The weird thing is that Quisses is never level 6. I never noticed that, that's really odd. I think she's either level 7 or level 8. Um, Squall and Selfie... No, I think Squall's level 7 and he's the lowest level character. I think when Zell and Selfie join their level 8. So, I understand how to junction GFs and the fact that they let you do your different commands. That's what they're going through. Magic GF, you get to choose whatever. I still do not quite understand the um, the further parts of it, like the um, uh, defense boost and the and the um, I guess you would call them weaknesses and strengths. Yeah, and all that. I'll, it's really complicated. I'll try to go over that. Uh, unfortunately, some of that stuff, like the elemental defense and like status defense, you don't unlock until you like level up your uh, GS of AP a little bit. Can you get AP and not EXP? Yes. What we're going to be doing the entire game is card modding enemies. So if you card an enemy, uh, you do not get any experience. But the very uh, tricky thing about uh, FF8 is that if you enter a battle and you do one attack on them and then run, you get experience for that one attack. So doing an initial level is you have to be just perfect. So actually, we are already going to be loading a save file. So no! I guess I should have shown... Um, drawing, but I can do that real quick. I mean, we're gonna see drawing in this game. Yeah. Uh, so, when you are uh, attacking enemies, um, you can draw magic from them. This is the very uh, specific thing about this game. So, every enemy always has certain amounts of magic. And magic in this game is an expendable resource. You can stock up to 100 charges of a certain spell. And then you can have that on a character and transfer that magic to other characters. But in this game, it's all about, like, it's a an expendable resource, which is, like, no other FF7 or FF game has ever done this. And even you can, uh, like, cast magic. Ooh. Here we can see this. So, yeah. Uh, and when you draw enemies, you can also just, like, cast it. So, if you don't want to go into your reserves, if an enemy has cure, you can just cast cure. It's a very unusual system. I, I like it, but the idea of um, stocking a hundred spells ends up making you have to do a lot of annoying grinding. So, uh, most of the field enemies now, I have, um, like, max magic for everything, which you can get fire, scan, thunder, cure, blizzard, and sleep. And right now, because of our GFs are so low, uh, Quisses can only uh, junction to magic, and yeah, I don't even have elemental. So if you push left and right, uh, this is for elemental defense and elemental attack. You can junction, obviously if you junction like fire to elemental attack, then your attacks will become fire. Which is nice, it doesn't do any extra damage, but if something's weak to fire, then you'll do extra damage. So overall, I don't think it's like super good, but it can be uh, kind of a, a useful. Now, elemental defense and status defense are is a lot more useful, especially if you, like, junction, like, uh, Asana to, uh, you can be sort of partially immune to everything. If you know it's coming up, like, certain, like, boss fights, you can be 100% immune to, like, what they're doing. Uh, so it's an interesting system, but again, it's, like, not explained super well, uh, which is kind of this entire game. And Squall doesn't even have um, strength, um, so all he has is spirit, which is basically a magic defense. So we're gonna go to the fire cavern. We have to do this to get Ifrit. When you do times three, does the time go down by times three? No, that's the same in FF9. Yeah, which makes sense. So they're kind of explaining a little bit more junctioning to specific uh, stats. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, initial level playthroughs are not only possible, but kind of preferred. Um, the way that this game works is that when you level up, the enemies scale with you, and enemies scale way higher than the stats you get from levels. So doing a level 8 playthrough versus a level 100 playthrough is way, way harder in the level 100. Because enemies will have, like, significantly more HP, and the you don't really get that many stats because they want to focus on junctioning in this game. So 
so I don't mean to bombard you with information, but... But that's literally what they do in this game. Yeah. 20 minutes. No, 10 minutes is completely fine. So the way to get the best score, so all you're doing, uh, this and the next seed mission is all being graded, um, like in the background. And the way to get the best score for this is do 10 minutes and then kill Ifrit at the very closest to zero seconds as possible. But I'm not going to do that because we'd literally be winning here for 10 minutes. Interesting. 40 minutes. I thought it would be the faster you do it. Yeah, you'd think so, but no. Whatever. I was gonna say, no battles. Yeah, the encounter rates aren't, like, super ridiculous in this game. And we're gonna get encounter none pretty quickly. No, the draw point! That little, um, I think it's just fire or something. That little purple thing you guys saw right there, uh, that's called a draw point. It's a place, instead of fighting enemies, that you can just draw from, um, just the background. Yep. There are also hidden draw points, uh, I think mostly on the island closest to heaven and island closest to hell, which is so far away, it's ridiculous. But, um... If you randomly just press uh, confirm in certain places, you can be like, "Hey, found a draw point," and you and you cannot see it at all. It's completely hidden. So, in general, with this game, uh, as weird as it is, uh, you can summon your GFs in battle, but uh, summoning stuff in this game is really bad. Um, so, it, actually, magic is also pretty bad too, but uh, we're just so early that it doesn't really matter. So what do you want to do? Just, just attack? Uh, what we're going to be doing is mostly uh, limit break uh, abusing the oh, entire okay. game. He does not attack much. Yeah, it's like the tutorial boss. There's not much to say, just use Blizzard. If you want, you can use Shiva. She does use, do more damage, but her... The problem is GF animations are so long. Yeah, the final one, uh, Eden, I think, takes it like a couple minutes. It's pretty crazy. Wait. So, this is part of every seed's, um, like becoming a seed, right? So my question is, does Ifrit join every single one of them? I... I don't know. This game's so weird. Like, is he like, I am one of many. Cypher also has me, because he's also a C. I guess, like, he does join other people. Like, when you downloaded Quetzalcoatl and, um, Shiva, it's like, I guess all the... You're just a student. It's like, why would they give that specially to Squall? So it must be just something that, like, everyone can have at once. Like a... Like a timeshare or something But they don't like really that. go into it that much, and, like, I don't want to, like, spoil it, but, like, using GFs has its drawbacks to, like, you as a person in, like, lore, but, like, how does it work for the other students? They never reference them, ever. And that's, that's sort of one of the main problems with this, uh, plot. Uh, there's a lot of things glossed over and things that just don't make sense, and you just have to kind of accept it. And the gardens and how seed works and how GFs work are really, like, kind of just glossed over. Yeah, and it's interesting, because in FF9, um... Uh, Eidoloins, or e Eidoloins, I, I don't know how to... Yeah, I Eidolon... Eidolons? Eidolons, I guess. Whatever, uh, the summons in that are story-wise extremely important. Yes. But in my opinion, are... Pretty worthless. They're garbage. Like, even the best ones are, like, pretty... So, it's funny. So here's you have the exact... Point. I yeah. don't need it, but... So, yeah, that you can see it there. You have the exact opposite. FF8, it's like... They're so important story-wise. Uh, the GFs. But they, like, are like, yeah, they just exist. And in FF9, they're like... Oh, no, 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 Like, the whole reason the plot happens for... Any... Oh, honestly, they're the whole reason the plot happens is that, you know? 
It's the same in seven. It's more of like they they just exist. They're a they're a they're a materia. Yeah, the one um, summons and magic in FF six are very very good. Um, they're both very rare and very strong, both gameplay and lore wise. So I think FF six is like the closest it gets to um, balancing it. Is that a uh, is that one of those that only uh, like Terra? Or maybe some like one other character can call. Only can everyone. Yeah, call only it? Terra can use magic for the beginning of the game. But once the um, I forget what they're called. Uh, once the summons like uh, relinquish themselves and like uh, become like stones, I forget exactly how it works. But uh, they basically let you impart the their magic and their power from. So their everyone remnants. can use a summon. Yeah. Then. Okay. Okay. So that's weird. FF9, only two of the characters, but it's very story-driven, can ever call summons, which is, a, you know, another reason why you're like, these are kind of worthless. Okay, uh, so early on this is kind of a mess. Uh, there's just a lot of grinding and weird st stuff that need to do. Um, so your starter deck for Triple Triad is really, really bad, and we do need to get a couple good cards from uh, people right now. So after this tutorial, I'm going to be loading another save where I basically just grinded out uh, some triple triad matches to get, like, cards that aren't complete trash. But I'll be showing off um, uh, getting the two, like, special cards that we need to get right now. So there's... Wait, there's you need to get? Like, you can't get them later? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, it's very specific. This game is very linear, and sometimes you don't come to Balam Garden back uh, for a long time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So whenever things become available, you should do it, like, right away. All I have to say about Triple Triad is dung da 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 dung. And there's gonna be a lot of Triple Triad in this playthrough, so I just wanted to skip through the beginning boring part. That's okay because Triple Triad is potentially the best part of this game. I heard that they made a an actual like card game based off of Triple Triad, like they actually released the cards. Oh yeah, that's cool. I'm sure they're all extremely expensive and yada yada. And then FF9 was like. Hey, we got this card game too. All right, so the but first it's really confusing. The first card we can get is from this jogging kid. Uh, he has mini mog. So whether they use their special card or not is completely RNG. So, so luckily we do get Ifrit right away just from getting him. Uh, you can get Quetzalcoatl and Shiva cards, but those are like special cards you get later. <laughs> You're probably gonna BTFO this kid. Yeah. Look at that! Uh, we have to get the Quisses card too, and the Quisses card player is a lot better. I just don't understand why they made it so much more complicated for FF9 with the. I forget what they call the. Yeah, it's anti fun. Terra Master or something like that. Although, I will say that, um. I. Only really like. Whoops. No. I only really like Triple Triad with with the base rules. The other rules make it really complicated. Yeah. Like uh, same is fine, but random is ridiculous. Like random picks five random cards from your set, which means that like. If you don't, uh... That was a dumb move. He couldn't do anything. If you have a bunch of... If you're trying to collect all the cards and you have, like, one of each card, then they're just gonna pick random cards. So if you have random, you have to get rid of all of your, uh... Not great cards. There we go. Which is very frustrating. Also, Sorceress, uh... Edia's card is the best. Yeah, the double A cards are, like, ridiculous. Um, but also, like, Edia has, like, double A, and then he, I think she has two and three as the other numbers. That's fine, just put her in the corner, then. Alright, and the other guy is in the cafeteria. Um, they kind of allude to it. Uh, he's basically a, a Quistus, like, fan. Oh, let's talk to this girl. So if you talk to this Wait. girl and uh, lend an ear twice, it, there's like a very minor scene later on. 
Whoop! No! Okay. Well, I did it in, uh... My other save correctly. So, whatever. I might have done it anyway. Aw, oh, cafeteria lady. So it's a guy in the back. Oh yeah. This is weird. You have to uh, press square to um, activate it. Uh, it's just kind of odd that way. Alright. So we have Mini Mog. Uh, Mini Mog doesn't seem worth it. It has double nines, which is pretty good. This guy has much better cards. Yeah, it looks like he has a couple that I didn't see you have. Yeah. So. And there's different AI levels. Um, this guy definitely has better AI. The dumbest AI just does the top left space 100% of the time, which is what the Jogger Kid did. Yep. Yeah, no one can take that. No one can take our Ifrit. BTFO'd. BTFO. It's so fun to, to get all the cards. The only thing that's lame, like Trevor said, there's sometimes where it's like nigh impossible to get a card if you miss it early on. There's a side quest later. <coughs> Excuse me, that allows you to get them, but it's very, very late game. To the point of, like, you probably, uh, you can't do a lot else in the world, if that makes sense. Yes. Also, the soundtrack, By the Way. By the Way. All right, get the spook! I already have spook. Oh, yeah, then. Yeah, no. There's a card rule for difference, uh, like, you get the difference of cards, so if you beat him, like, 9-1, to one, you literally get, like, his entire, like, deck. Uh, that rule is pretty cool. Of course, if you save right beforehand, it rules even more, because then if you lose, you don't get absolutely shrecked. Come on, give me a stupid thing. It's kind of just a better one of that. Nice. No, don't use a. Ooh. You never want to go first in this dumb game. All right. Um. So if they use, if I put Tom Berry King, he has to use Quistus to get the card, and then I can just use like pretty much anything to get, or I can use Biggs and Wedge. Yeah. Gosh. I would do that. He'll take it from the. Oh. oh. Well, I wasn't thinking. No, that's fine. You can still easily take that upper right. Yeah. Uh... Bum, bum, bum. E, Z, clap. You have better cards, you'll win. That's pretty much what it comes down yeah. to. Put effort on the bottom left. Cool, now just use that, uh, yeah. Oh, oops, my bad. Well, I guess you were gonna draw anyway. There wasn't much I can do. Yeah. Like, when you go, like, second, especially when he's using, like, a good card like that. Ugh. Oh, come on. And then he goes first! Hey, you can get that Tonberry, that'll... I'm um, not Tonberry, uh, Marlboro. That'll be an upgrade. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, especially since there's only, um... Nine slots. Going first actually really does stink. 
Sure does. Can't take that. Easy clap! Easy clap! You know what I don't- I also don't like about the FF9 card game? It keeps track of how many wins and losses you have, and draws. That, like, bothers me. Yeah. Oh, come on, dude. That's a pretty dumb move from me. If you put Tonberry at the top, he- middle, he can't take it. Do upper right. Or no, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. because It doesn't matter, right. yeah. He's probably gonna have to use that, uh, ruby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bottom, yep, you got it. Easy clap, easy It's still clap. a draw, but whatever, I didn't lose a card. Easy clap, but easy clap. I wish there was a way in the in this version that you could just have a preloaded five cards. All right, thank God she went first. He went first. All right, I'm gonna lose this, but I uh, can't take the quizzes card. Impossible for him. <laughs> There's a there's a rule later in the game. Um, I, I think we should explain. So when you uh, go to different regions, different regions of the game play different um, play different rules. So some of the rules are like kind of insane. Like I said, random where it chooses five cards. There's one I truly hate, and I forget what it's, what it's called. It's essentially. Everyone gets to keep the card that they flipped. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Tim? that's a horrible rule. So, like, you can win seven to three, but they're gonna take your three cards that they flipped over, and it's like, oh, okay, you flipped over my Quistus card. Now I can, now I have to get it again. You know, it. I I refuse By to way, play under that. I just want to say that I think Squall looks way cooler in a school uniform than his the late '90s Namura getup. Yeah, definitely. Go fight T 